Probably. Can we just get it out there and just say Hangover 2? Uh, that's second on my list. That's <laughs> number two. It's going to be one of the worst films ever made in the past ten years. It is so horrible. And, it's, and I'm, I'm including any Nicholas Cage films. <laughs> it's so appalling. <laughs> I don't even know why it exists apart from to make more money. And it's just the same jokes, louder, nastier, brash. I mean, I didn't like the first Hangover, but the second... I, 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 I love the first Hangover, but, you know, oh, I haven't watched it with you and I came out absolutely angry. <laughs> you <laughs> ran it more than I did. I, I, I so ran it, I ran it. The same type of plot, the mm. same jokes, you know, it's coming, the whole point of the first one being so kind of funny because mm. it was an element of surprise, mm -hmm. there's no surprise here, you know, they're trying to do the same thing, mm. it's just the same situation but different people, yep. the chemistry is not developed, you just feel like you've just gone straight back. Yeah, they reset it, that's what I didn't like, was that Alan was an outcast again, even though it looked like he was part of the group in the first. I think it would have worked if they changed a, diff a completely different situation um, and so you have new jokes, new surprises and it, it would work that way but as a person who loved the first one so much I think that's why I was angry because it tremendously it let me down. It a lot more than me. I expected very low things and they were blissfully unmet. It's horrible. It was just debauchedly, horribly bad. I think the only person who comes out with credit is Bradley Cooper. But that's only because no. I love Limitless so no, much. No, I disagree. Then kind of save face I think Michael. I think Mike Tyson comes out and looks worse <laughs> than he started off with in this. And I mean, if they had the tiger, if they had the tiger in it, that would be exactly what you would get. The tiger's all probably a bit of better performance than this. Well, quite frankly, four tigers. I'd love to see that, wouldn't you? And the monkey. The four tigers and the monkey, and that is it. The whole film. All right. Honorable mention for me. The first film straight in bottom of the pile is Conan the Barbarian. I haven't seen that, that's probably for a reason. It was boring and gory and pointless. The whole plot of the film makes no sense and it's just so great. I had to... Re you know a bad film when I have to put in effort to concentrate on it and to not go to sleep and it is just so, so pointless. Here's one of the things that happens, right? The whole point is that this, there's a necromancer. Do you know what a necromancer is? Go for it. It's um, somebody who can conjure the dead back up. So like a voodoo, a witch doctor, right? Okay. And what they do is they make this mask, this is the best I can gather, there's a mask, right? And the mask is put on and then you can control the universe, right? Much like Masters of the Universe, right? Or Bernard's Watch. Yeah, and Bernard's Watch, of course. <laughs> and what happens is, Co this guy's like, oh, I can control the universe. Conan turns up and he fights him with swords. Why doesn't the dude just kill him? Steal his soul? He can do anything. He can control the universe. Why not just make him physically impossible, turn him into a duck? I don't know why he goes, oh, here is a challenge. I will fight you, even though you've previously beaten me in the fight. And he's got this guy who's, who runs about him, right? And he's a massive black fella. And um, he is Sinbad. <laughs> Sinbad is in blood. And it's like a racist Sinbad. It, it's just, no, there's no reason to watch the film whatsoever. And, um, okay, here's a summary of a perfect example, right? summary of the film is there's this moment where there's this witch queen and she's very good this witch queen quick cream queen witch this cream. witch queen available boots and she go she she has a bit of uh, magical powder and she goes <sighs> and she's blowing my hand by the way and it drops into the sand and it makes sand creatures these sand creatures look like warriors they're like men right here's the thing these sand creatures can only attack one at a time it seems it's the sand it could attack ten at a time right and Conan has a sword, and he cuts through them, and they die. It's sand! Uh, even Spider-Man 3 knew that if you cut through sand, it's still sand. It can adapt. But no, they're like, oh no, you've cut me with a steel knife. I didn't see that coming. Oh dear. Now oh, we'll just send in another one. I don't know why it exists. There is, it is appalling, without merit, or use. No. And that's even, he is a worse actor than Arnold Schwarzenegger. You heard me right, people. Well, that brings on to me saying Drive Angry was appalling and anything with Nicolas Cage. Drive Angry is in my list and um, I'd like to explain, you can explain why you just like Drive Angry first, but I've got my own reasons. Yeah, I've got I said two words. What? <laughs> Nicolas Cage. No, um, to be fair, Season of the Witch came out this year and he wasn't so bad in that. Yeah, also, he, all he, his what, earlier he wasn't work, so bad, so you're expecting him to no, be No, what you're doing is you're typecasting him. I mean, if you look at Lord of War, that was a great film. Matchstick Man was a great film. Where was Lord of War? About four years ago. Snake Eyes was brilliant. When was that? Five years ago. No, no. Name a recent film. Season of the Witch isn't horrific. It isn't as bad as I'd expect. It's, it's, it's not my bottom five. It's not my bottom five. It's not my bottom five. It's very good. Drive Angry just has no point. He's, he literally, like you said, he sees this girl 
who apparently, who, what was she, the waitress, and she can kick ass at the same time. It's just She knows how to use a gun. She, she's prepared yeah, for any true. situation whatsoever. And I like the slot waitress at the beginning. My daddy's been in prison, boy, so it's the full moon. I always get a little bit randy round there. Yeah, of course you do, darling. It's just an excuse for Nicholas Cage to go around, blow stuff up, shoot people, and have a bad haircut. <laughs> <laughs> it is like Gone in 60 Seconds meets Constantine, isn't it? Um, the reason that I dislike, okay, the, the epitome of why I drive angry is bad is one sentence. I never disrobe before a gunfight. Any film that owns that sentence is just, why don't you do it naked, baby? I never disrobe before a gunfight. And he doesn't. He fights her. He fights. He doesn't stop. He's on the job and he doesn't stop. He has a gunfight. And, and uh, if that guy's immortal at the end, right, how did he kill him? Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. It just doesn't make sense. Doesn't make sense in any way, shape, or form. Drive Angry is, by the way, third on my list. Third? Yes. Yep. Okay. <laughs> Something that I, uh, I fell asleep to halfway through, and I really wanted to see it because the Avengers, Captain America, that has to be one of the most boring, slow-paced films with a, a superhero who really can't do much. I think it's quite a, um, a right film, honestly. I thought I, I wasn't upset by it. Uh, it has been a year of superhero films, so we have had... I'm going to mention one, but I'll mention the others that have been out. But Green he's not Lantern. really a superhero. He's yeah, but just Green Lantern is just a r magical ring. But um, at least he has a superpower. This guy just seems to be a hope for America. No, he has a, a lot of... You no, know, he's, he's faster and stronger, but he's oh, harder, well, better, faster, faster stronger. stronger. He, he's got a massive... He's Stone Cold Steve Austin. He's got, yeah, he's got a metal... Why would he in the expendables? <laughs> anyway, he's got a metal shield that's amazing. I thought, but the best thing... metal shield, that's amazing. That, that's, well, Iron Man has what I like, blocks, and he has the metal shield that's amazing. What I liked about it, most of all, was that um, Hugo Weaving's character, the Red Skull, was too evil for the Nazis. That's what <laughs> I liked. They were like, no, this guy's too crazy for us. And you think, how crazy? He's not that evil. I mean, the thing I liked about Captain America was that it knew how stupid it was. It balanced its cards well, because it did go... Here's a guy, realistically, Captain America is about a guy who wants to go off and fight in the wars, and he gets the ability, and then they go, actually, you're just going to become a patriot, you're just going to become a mascot. And that's what I liked about it, was it wasn't shit, but in the end of Captain America, the, poor, the bad point is, is that Captain America didn't even kill him, he just turned up. I thought it was really colluded, to be fair, mm. that he woke like, oh, looking for breakfast? Actually, I am Captain. Oh, well, it's all right, we're all going to turn up in the Avengers movie. So, that's all right. Uh, uh, real quick on that, Thor. I'll talk about oh, Thor real yeah, quick. Thor. I, I read like that, but that's because I didn't know anything about <laughs> Thor. Before. And it was, it was really well done, rather than, say, Captain America, it actually had a decent and different storyline. Kenneth Branagan brought out really well. No how to direct films, I'll give him that, yeah. right? Um, and it was funny enough to be funny, and... But the thing is, is I don't like how he's an arrogant guy, and he's an arrogant guy at the beginning, and he's an arrogant guy at the end. It doesn't really make any sense. However, Thor is better than Captain America, if only for the cameo by Hawkeye, right in the middle. Where he's like, we're going to get him. We're going to, um... When, when Thor's going to get the hammer... Yeah. And... Hawkeye no, the top of the Yeah, track. Hawkeye, and you're like, Oh, it's Hawkeye! And you can't help but react. It's such a great, such a great moment. That is a brilliant moment. But, um... I think one of my friends summarised Thor best when he said, um, I can see why that Loki turned on him. It was a right blank. I can't say what that word is. But, um, Sausage. see you next Tuesday. And I was like, what a sentence. What a sentence. I still think that Thor should have been, um, the guy who played Thor should have been Triple H. Mostly because like he's got long a, hair. any wrestler in no, the film. No, he's got long hair. He's got a penchant for hammers. It would work. It would be a perfect, perfect thing, I think. Or Nicholas Cage. <laughs> no, yeah, Nicholas Cage doesn't have long hair or a push on for hammers. If it was a gun, and it made no sense, or if it was a car or a gun, Nicholas Cage could be in it. In fact, they're going to make, have you heard, they're going to make um, Ghost Rider 2. Because Nicholas Cage... <laughs> Nicholas Cage is in Ghost Rider 2, right? This is the best thing. Nicholas Cage is in Ghost Rider 2. It's not going to be a sequel, apparently. It's going to be a remake of the one he was already in. I'm not making it up. You look it up online. Oh, I, I put down four plus an actor, and I think you know which actor that is. Go on. Hangover 2, Drive <laughs> Angry, Captain America, Green Hornet, and Nicholas Cage. You put down an actor, not <laughs> a film. <Yeah. laughs> Excellent. I have the Green Hornet down. Green Hornet. Because Seth Rogen is the worst actor of it, appallingly bad. In the original, this is what happened, right? You had 
Um, Bruce Lee as the driver. I forget his name. I think it, I know it's something racist. So I'm not even going to attempt to pronounce it. Bruce Lee. Bruce Lee is in it. In the original series, Bruce Lee's in it and another character, right? And the Green Hornet is this guy who runs about, solves crimes. He's very clever. And the thing is, Bruce Lee's the martial arts guy. In the sequel, this is what happens. There's the Japanese guy, who can do anything, it is amazing, and Seth Rogen, who, can do anything. who is selfish, and that's it. Right? Christopher Waltz is in it as a villain who isn't scary, and the whole point is he isn't scary, he's trying to make people scared. James Ferrango turns up, sorry, James Franco turns up in the first five minutes and dies. James Ferrango. Ferrango, yes. James Franco turns up in the first five minutes and dies, and that is the death of the film, right? This is the thing that I have against it most. There is no reason why that film couldn't be a PG if Seth Rogen couldn't control his potty mouth, right? He says, right, I'm not going to say what it is, but sugar hot iced tea, right? He says that, <laughs> but he says it in the middle of sentences. So he goes, oh yeah, that's hot. Why don't we have some sh with that? And you're like, really? Can't you cut out the bad language and then it'd be a fine film, it'd be a family film, but no. Oh, I'm just broken, I can be funny, I'm just going to drink myself into a stupor. Yeah, why don't you just get an axe with it, mate? Um, I've also got in my bottom five, Immortals. I didn't see that. Okay, the plot of it is this. It is basically Clash of the Titans with 300. It is worse than the remake of Clash of the Titans last year. It is horrible. And the best thing about it is um, Mickey Rourke. Mickey Rourke is in it. He eats for most of the film. And... Oh, no, but it's a documentary. It is a documentary. All he does is he has magical hats. He has several amazing hats. There's one that goes over his face like it's a hood. Then there's another one which goes up in the air like it's a mohawk. Then he's got one that looks like horns, and you just think, good grief. But if you just like, if you took an out shares in some kind of top hat business, and your business is down, so you're going to be like, oh yeah, I'm just going to do this. It's appalling. With no, 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 no. The worst film of the year for me. Watch, you tell me yours and then I'll go on to mine because I'm going to rant about this. This will be a rant. Come. Personal or? Personal. Personal? Hangover 2. Okay. Without a question. And just generally? Uh, drive Angry. Okay. It's just, it's not worthy of a film. Have you said your five? Oh, you have, haven't you? I've okay, right. Five. Here we go. Sucker Punch is the worst film of the year. Now, this is by Zack Snyder, who brought us Watchmen, 300, and that's about it, right? Now, 300 really is a political drama, but what he did was he just put them in tight leather and made them kill each other. Watchmen is a film about uh, the bureaucracy of the world, politics, all those sorts of things. He just put them in tight leather and made them kill each other. <clears throat> Guess what he does in Sucker Punch? He puts girls, young girls, mind, Oh, sorry. In the beginning of that, right, in the beginning of Sucker Punch, the advert looks amazing. You've seen the advert for Sucker Punch, haven't yeah. you? It looks incredible. That was the worst marketing I've ever seen. You will be unprepared. You will be bored. Senseless. It has nothing... Right. This girl goes to an asylum, right? She looks about 16, I'd say. 15, 16. But they make a point. One character goes to another and she goes, are you sure she's 21? And they go, yes. I'm 100% sure she's 21. So now all of our consciences are clear. Now all the guys are off, we can do what we want. This is what happens in this film. This girl uh, is just about to have a lobotomy, and at the second of having a lobotomy, she goes into a world where she's a burlesque dancer, right? Then in that world, she goes into another world where she can fight zombies and attack people and all these other things and just do ninja stuff, right? Makes no sense. None whatsoever. It is appalling, horrible, debauch, it is paedophiliac, trash, cinema, poppycock, nothing. I, I, if I never watch a Zack Snyder film again, it will be too soon. I, nothing is good in Sucker Punch. Nothing. And that is why it's your film of the year. On the other hand, <laughs> in balance... I like all those things. <laughs> in balance, the advert was amazing. <laughs> That's it. I saw the advert, and I, I did. The reason why I didn't see it is I was thinking they're the only best part of the movie. So I thought, yeah, let's not see it. They are. You're right. 